Hi, welcome to the podcast for when the curves line up for July 6, 2024, featuring how to see the Dwarf Planet series. Please see the article that includes diagrams of today's events on the website at whenthecurveslineup.com. Text by Jeffrey L. Hunt In Chicago, sunrise occurs at 5.23 a.m. Central Daylight Time followed by sunset at 8.28 p.m. Earth overtakes Ceres, passing between the asteroid, renamed a dwarf planet, and the Sun, a geometric configuration known as opposition. Formerly known as one Ceres, this body was the first one observed revolving around the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. These small bodies catalogued with an ordinal number that indicates their order of discovery. For example, dwarf planet Pluto is catalogued as 134,340 Pluto. Ceres was thoroughly mapped by the Dawn spacecraft in 2015. The rocky body is coated with ices. Ceres is visible through a binocular among the stars of the teapot of Sagittarius, the modern informal name for the archer's brighter stars. By three hours after sunset, about midnight for sky watchers at the western edges of time zones, Sagittarius is low in the south-southeast, high enough to locate Ceres. The dwarf planet is near the star Acela in the pot's handle. See the chart in the article that shows the star field. Place the handle in the binocular field. Locate Nunki, Tau Sagittarii, Acela, and Phi Sagittarii. Faint Ceres is to Acela's upper left. The dwarf planet is considerably dimmer than the neighboring star. To make sure it is Ceres, look again with a binocular each clear evening. Ceres is farther westward as it appears to retrograde. Tomorrow evening, it is to the upper left, but closer to the star. On July 8, it is to the upper right. By July 15, it appears above the globular star cluster Messi 54, an added bonus to the field of view. Globular clusters contain thousands of stellar members. They revolve around the center of the galaxy, but outside its plane. Their orbits, chemistries, and ages differ from those open or galactic clusters that inhabit the denser spiral arms of the Milky Way. Through a binocular the globular clusters resemble oversized, fuzzy stars. A telescope reveals individual stars and a seemingly densely packed center. Here is today's planet forecast. In the morning sky. Leading up to their August 14th conjunction at an hour before sunrise, Mars begins to close the gap to Jupiter. Mars, marching eastward in front of Aries, is over 25 degrees above the eastern horizon. Before the Jupiter-Mars conjunction, Mars passes the Pleiades star cluster, over 10 degrees to Mars' lower left, in two weeks. Jupiter is nearly 15 degrees up in the east and less than 20 degrees to Mars' lower left. The Jovian giant is slowly moving eastward in front of Taurus, 4.8 degrees to the upper left of Aldebaran, the bull's brightest star. Do not confuse Jupiter with Capella, the bright star nearly 25 degrees up in the northeast. Jupiter is brighter and to the star's lower right. Saturn is less than halfway up in the south-southeast. It is in front of a dim Aquarius starfield, but two stars in neighboring constellations, Deneb Kaitos, in Cetus, and Fomalot, in the southern fish, are lower in the sky. Saturn is retrograding, appearing to move westward against the starfield. Its opposition occurs September 7. Because it is farther away in the solar system, Saturn's imaginary retrograde track in the sky is considerably smaller than Ceres and is within a single binocular field. In the evening sky. The moon was at its new phase about 24 hours ago. It sets over an hour after the sun and over 30 minutes after Venus. Both are veiled in bright twilight. Tomorrow evening, the crescent moon is above Mercury. As the innermost planet climbs into the evening sky, its visibility is hindered by long summer evening twilight and our poor view of the solar system near the western horizon at this season. At 30 minutes after nightfall, Mercury is over 8 degrees above the west-northwest horizon. Use a binocular to see the speedy planet appear as a bright star. Thank you for listening. Please read the articles at whenthecurveslineup.com.